Evening, folks. Eric from Another Voice with Jason and Eric. Heard Mondays 1 to 2 on Spin FM 103.3. And also you can find us on canigetawordin.com or go to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast channel, Another Voice with Jason and Eric. Uh, glad to be back with you. The best speech so far of the conventions, both of them, has to have been former President Clinton's speech. Um, I think he did a masterful job. I think he was able to inspire, to critique, and to encourage. And I think he did it in a way that was positive. This is the thing, I, the one thing about his speech that really stuck out to me, it was a positive speech, even when he was criticizing the other side. There was humor, there was fun. But the speech overall was positive. And I know the dirty word that's thrown around, uh, compromise, cooperation. And I know some of the other uh, radio talking heads, you know, try to reinterpret what compromise means. They'll say compromise means doing what Democrats want. And that's not, that's not true. But this idea of working together and, and highlighting his experiences working with Republicans. Yes, I know there were political aspects to that. I know he he was kind of forced into working with the Republicans in some areas, but overall, he did work together and they did cooperate during his presidency and after. And I like that aspect of the speech. I also like that he did what the Republic the Democratic Party needed to be done. He the idea started with with uh, Mayor Castro on the keynote address and some of the other speakers, but Bill Clinton really nailed what needed to be done. The typical question asked when, of a challenger to an incumbent is, are you better off, American people, than you were four years ago? And that's a question that's being asked by the Republicans, and it's a legitimate question to an extent. Um, it, 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 it tends to focus on an individual. Are you personally better off and the problem is while the country is better off than it was and while many of us are better off maybe even only slightly but we are better off there's a lot of people out there who aren't there are a lot of people who are still out of work there are a lot of people who are who are doing jobs that are way below income level that they made before so it almost seemed like the democrats were avoiding that question and Republicans were making hay of that. And President Clinton came back and he hit that hard, pointing out how, as a country, we are better off. And he also recognized that you and I might not feel that. Which brings us to what he, the fundamental crux of what he was saying was you have a choice. As American people, if you think, if you're willing to say, okay, the president, we are, as a country, better off, I'm still not better off, but I can see how it's going to get better, I'm going to give the president a second term to complete what he started. Then you vote for President Obama. If, on the other hand, you say, look, you've had four years, yeah, sure, you had struggles in Congress, there was an opposing side who said that their main goal was to get you to not be re reelected, but that's besides the point, you weren't able to come up with a job, you're fired as you know mr trump would say uh and bring in mitt romney then you vote for mitt romney the problem i have is like president clinton said we look back at, you look at mitt romney's plan you look at the idea the republicans are pushing it is some of the exact same policies that were in place when this all fell apart now i agree that democrats and republicans alike have a big hand in what happened. I agree that federal government, state governments, uh, banks, businesses, individuals all played a role in making this economy tank. But the practices and the policies that were in place before are what Mitt Romney and company wanted to put back in place. And so there's your choice. Now I will say that they that Mitt Romney and his friends tend to look back to when trickle-down economics supposedly worked. But it's a different situation today. But I do say that President Clinton did a good job of laying out the case, of making the case 
for why you reelect President Obama. You might not agree with it. You might say, nah, sorry, get out of there. But he made a good case. He did a great speech on that. The other thing that, that uh, I felt today, or yesterday, is that it's sad that it took a man who's known worldwide for telling a lie to school the Republican Party on telling the truth. Now, friends on the right, don't get too upset with me, but it is true. In a lot of those speeches, there were some lies or some distortions of the truth. I'm not talking about political shading or, or pushing one side or the other. Both parties do it. It happens all the time. I'm talking about lies, clear, specific, and, and lies that have been pointed out by impartial media as well as partial media. Look, Fox News took Paul Ryan, someone on Fox News, took Paul Ryan to task for some of the false and misleading statements he made. It shocked me to see that it was Bill Clinton, who everybody acknowledges as a liar for the Monica Lewinsky situation, to take the Republicans to task for lying. And it makes me think to my Republican friends, why don't you force your leaders to use the tools, the facts, the information there that's honest and truthful, that you can put up against President Obama's record. You don't actually have to make these things up. There are plenty of reasons why you would make a decision, I want somebody else, without having to produce a lie. So I really ask Republicans to tell their leaders, stop it. Stop giving the other side fodder. Stop giving independents reasons to say, well, maybe I don't want to vote for you if you can't tell me the story straight. So I think President, uh, President Clinton did those very well. Um, I will say that he did have his exaggerations. He had his mistakes. Uh, he mentioned that the Affordable Care Act has, has brought the last two years health care cost to 4%. And while the 4% aspect is true, it can't necessarily be linked directly to the Affordable Care Act since the bulk of the Affordable Care Act doesn't go into place until 2014. Although I think it may, some of the things may have had a factor in it. Uh, the, let's see what else he, the Medicare claim that, that if, if we reelect, uh, if we re, if we elect President, uh, Governor Romney and he gets to do what he wants, Medicare will be bankrupt in, in eight years, and that's not accurate. It, uh, it's, um, it's not going to go broke. The hospital insurance trust fund won't be able to pay the benefits for full. Um, and he exaggerated that the stimulus bill in 2009 cut taxes for 95% of the American people. According to the, the Nonpartisan Tax Policy Center, uh, it benefited about 76 of all families and single individuals. Uh, which, by the way, while not 95%, is a whole lot better than saying it failed. So there were uh, there were some exaggerations and some... I don't think they were lies. I think they were shading of the truth. Because there's facts that the 4% was true, the 74. Uh, so he had his partisan moments, too. But overall, it was the speech, I think, that the Democrats needed. And I think people listening, if they're going to listen honestly, they need to remember what it was like at the beginning of President Obama's term. And this isn't blaming Bush. This isn't, this isn't saying I'm not taking responsibility for my actions. It's pointing out reality. Look, if two years ago, you ran up all your credit cards to, or your wife ran up all your credit cards to five, five you know, full, full max, total maxed out. And you're trying to clear them up to point out that the, you weren't able to, to clear them all off in two years or four years because they were so far in the debt hole is not blaming your wife. It's a fact. But we need to evaluate what's happened. But well, we do need to remember what happened to lead us into this mess. And we are better off as a country. Now, is that enough to reelect the man? That's your decision. But you have to look at all the facts. And I just want to say, President Clinton, good job. Did a good speech. Let's see what 
our current present comes up with. All right, until our next podcast, have a great day.